2018 meeting of the Grand Marais Public Utilities Commission at this time. And uh, do I actually have to do roll call? How do I do roll call? That's up to you. You're the chair. Okay. We're all here. Um, consent agenda. Oh, uh, yeah. Consent agenda, and I would add one thing is that I sent out a late memo that I wanted to be part of the. Did everybody get that? Yes. PUC okay. packet. There's also printed out versions yes. of it if they need it. Okay, and was that sent to the uh, newspaper and WTIP and any other people on the email list for the PUC agenda? It wasn't even sent to me, I don't think, was it? Mm -hmm. Until yeah. yesterday? No, it was sent on fr last Friday, I believe. And you were gone and caught in a snowstorm. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, can we, Hayden, can we make sure that memo is put in next week's information packet just so that it's part well, of the. It'll be part of our, what we'll put online with our agenda records. Okay, good. That's all. Printed copies here. Okay, I know, I, I remember it. No, I know, but I was wondering <laughs> if you needed to, it for something. I just want to make sure that it was all public so it didn't look like I was uh, secretly communicating with anybody. So you, you're asking to add on your item somewhere on the agenda? It actually falls under the... Um, I think it falls under all three, perhaps the, four, the budget, of D, the budget. E, F, and G. The budget? Yep, the it budget. Fa falls under budget. Right. Okay, any other consent agenda issues? I'd make a motion, but I wasn't here to uh, you know, acknowledge these minutes that you know, they look very complete for a... Uh, I thought they were good. <laughs> so... I, okay, second. Um, I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Climate Plan Act. Climate Action Plan implementation. Was Shane going to show up today? 50-50. Uh, he was going to come talk about some stuff that I said we didn't, wasn't time to talk about yet uh, in terms of asking okay. questions about how to do things. We took care of it in, in, at a staff level last week. Okay. So he said he might show up to talk about the rest of this, but he and I spoke anyway. So. Okay. So are we on the memo from mm -hmm. you to the commissioners? Okay. Yes. All right. Which I thought was great. Thank you so much, Mike. Those are really um, I th obviously you put some thought into that, and um, I thought they were, you know, some really good good options. I think we're in a good position. Want to do some of them? I do. <laughs> I'm going to let others speak first. <clears throat> Well, I like the idea of increasing Shane's hours to, you know, get get things moving along on the uh, climate action plan. Uh, I mean, I ran into him a week or so back, and you know, he was pretty excited about that possibility. And, um, you know, the question I have is: Is he available for forty hours? And he says probably not. That's kind of uh, that's like kind of what I sensed. He assumed that he was working half time, and so he's made other plans for the other half of his time, uh, which doesn't mean, you know, it's not uh, Shane for 40 hours a week. It's somebody. Mm -hmm. So maybe we find another person that's job sharing that responsibility if we want to go down that path. Uh, that actually makes some sense to me because maybe we would get different skill sets or have a backup if one of the people mm -hmm. moved on or whatever. I mean. Yeah, there's some benefits to it. I think in one year's time there's probably a lot more costs than benefits to having two people there because it's difficult to coordinate their efforts and get everybody together on things but we'll be happy to take advantage of the benefits of different interests and different skills and getting some uh, redundancy just in case people come and go which tends to happen so I still think it's a good option to do and should we go through all three of them and then or, well, three, four, five of them first, and then kind of decide which we're serious about, or do we want to? 
Yeah, I, I had a question. Approve them as we go. The second one, the city administrator shift in duties, and just uh, you know how you see that playing out, Mike. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I have the sense that there's a. Well, I keep hearing that there's there's kind of a backlog of projects and things and stuff that's you know. Well, I think that's not a the permanent point. situation that there'll be a backlog of things. I, I, I agree, but uh, and know, it seems like we're not we're now. This is suggesting that we would bump this ahead of any of that backlog stuff and you know the council, well, I, council hasn't talked about that so no and this is on the backlog um in my mind like if you're telling me this isn't going fast enough then i'm interpreting that as this is something that you want to see more work done on that's not getting done mm -hmm. so that sounds like the backlog to me uh, the things that the council wants to do i don't see this as having a positive or negative effect on that this would be taking some duties that I'm doing uh, for the council right now, and particularly something like uh, planning and zoning, that we could potentially buy that skill on the market. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I've actually already started kind of on a temporary basis doing more things for the electric utility because of because of our interest in seeing some of these things happen and our need to work with SIMPA to make it happen and the fact that we don't have an electric superintendent. Mm -hmm. So this is more of a, this is what I think it would take to make this permanent after having done this for about three months now. This is not sustainable. I need to have something off the plate to keep this on it. So mm -hmm. so would this um, planning and con zoning contract support be a part-time position? It wouldn't be someone here at all. Probably okay. We'd be contracting with a firm that does planning. Oh, firm. Okay. And and there'll be a number of hours per month, mm -hmm. and we'll have them staff our meetings and deal with the more complex, uh, you know, variance, conditional use, zoning amendment, things like that. Mm -hmm. And Tim, Tim, you're on the planning and zoning commission. Mm -hmm. So I mean, how do you feel about that? I I, I really like the idea because we would get Mike. Uh, to work on PUC things more, which would be, I think, very beneficial to our interests. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a, that's a it's a it's a maybe a win-win type situation. Uh, you know, we take Mike off that, take that responsibility away from him, give it to somebody, some other professional that's that's knows how to, knows the business. I mean, the the downside of it is that you don't have any, you won't have somebody necessarily that's that's familiar with. Um, local conditions and, and, and well yeah. the, I mean the other possible downside is you still do and will I really be able to take it off my plate well because a lot of the business that I conduct with this is random time sort of business somebody yeah. calls it a question yeah mm -hmm. you know I just got a question this morning can you sell this property they've got questions about how the rules work and right. do we want that sort of situation to turn into well uh, we'll put you on the list and next Tuesday when our consultant mm -hmm. is available they'll give you a call back Mm -hmm. That's one of the potential downsides of a, of a shift like yeah. this. So it, it, uh, having me in the office available to answer questions at a moment's notice is a very high level of service that we're providing, and it won't be that high when we, when we make a shift like this. Do you have a twin? <laughs> There's a lot of people that are better at this than me. I'm sure we'll find one. It's just going to okay. take a little time. There, there'll be some probably some growing pains with it. Uh, you know, it's a thing that... Uh, but but I guess my my bigger question is you know what what the council's you know yeah. attitude is towards this kind of a shift because we've not had that kind of this discussion at no. all at the at the council level no. so okay. so well not to this level of detail the idea that right. I've been spending some of my time going to SIMPA meetings we've yep. talked to them about but I don't think we've kind of closed the circle and said here's the results of that and here's what we would need to make it sustainable well I think other council members have other ideas of priorities too that they think are not getting taken care of and would they think that uh, the public utilities getting kind of more bumped to, bump to the front uh, mm -hmm. of the line um, no my costs, impression costs is their, their interest mm -hmm. too so yeah. and my impression is that we end up paying for this though these dollar figures are from our budget yes yes that's the idea here is that there we find a way to take more electric fund money and put it in the general fund in exchange, it's used to free up some of my time to work mm -hmm. in the electric department. 
So I don't know if that helps the case to the council. I don't, I don't think we, it really addresses we, what we, Tim's talking about. We didn't. Okay. We, we, we talked about that transfer, but we never talked about how that, that money might be used. It was kind of distributed between, I mean, through throughout the the the, bud, the, the general budget for the city. So this kind of level of detail wasn't part of that conversation. That so I mean, well, I think I mean, I'm not opposed <coughs> to it. I just mm -hmm. think that, that the council is going to have to to uh, kind of weigh in, weigh in on you know, absolutely. If they, if that's how they want that money that is coming from uh, the utilities to the general fund to be used. Yep. Well, they have to weigh in anyway because I work for them. Yes. You know, oh, that's right. I, I oh, that's right. You. <laughs> <laughs> I do work for you, but you don't get to vote to hire me and fire me. So I, we have to rely on their guidance on how they want me to spend okay. my time. So we can make a recommendation here, though. Yeah. Obviously. Can you talk about the third one? I'm a little confused by that. So um, other than just my time being freed up, there are other administrative staff people that could potentially be helping with working on climate action plan implementation. And in order for them to free up their schedule, this is one thing that we could do. Right now, um, we'll be done installing our electric meters in a few months. Our, our last big batch is gonna come, I don't know, this week. And so then we'll be free to just be out there changing them away, uh, then our electric system's great and up and running, but we still have to read meters because we've got all of our water meters out in the field. Wow. So we haven't really saved any of our time in terms of meter reading until the water meter system is done. And it's also then all the things that come with the uh, manual reading of meters, the manual entry of reads, the, the managing of the billing system. Once this full AMI system is installed and running, there's a good week of time where our staff is either out in the field reading meters or our staff in the office is working with meter reads that becomes almost unnecessary. So we could spend some resources to try and move up our implementation schedule. And then once we're done, we'll have more time from our line workers, we'll have more time from our water wastewater staff, we'll have more time from Hayden and from, and from Kim. Um, you know, particularly Hayden, though, would be a, a resource that could help spend some time working on climate action plan implementation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would be a way to do it. So this is kind of a, um, this isn't something that we've thought about a lot. Some of these other issues we've kind of had cooking for a while, but this is a newer one. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly how we would do this yet. Sure. So what our, what our existing idea about this is in 2020, we need to get our water staff together with our uh, meter contractor and start planning out what's the equipment we're going to buy and how's it going to get installed and all those things. And so if we brought somebody in that might be able to help facilitate that conversation, mm -hmm. that that's what we're thinking about there. So what was, what was the timeline that you know we, we had in mind in terms of doing that build out for the, the water system. I mean, it seemed like it was a couple years down the line, but yeah. it was going to happen anyway. So. Well, it's, I mean, it, it was something where we probably were looking at buying equipment next year and installing, and we're either going to be installing it, you know, I don't know how long it takes because we don't have, we haven't done these yet. With electric meters, it's, it's literally as simple as take the old meter up, put the new meter in and do a little bit of programming. Sure. With water meters, we have to get into somebody's basement and there may be plumbing involved, um, there may be wiring involved so that the meter can read to the electric meter. Right. So each one requires a lot more effort. So even though there's only, you know, there's half as many water meters as electric meters, mm -hmm. it might take five times as long to do the installation. Yeah. And if there's 50 of those meters that are really difficult for us to schedule and get in, it might take months just to finish you know, even after we got 80% yeah. done or 90% done. Well, I think that's a great idea. I would like to see both mm -hmm. one and three. I'd like to, to do that. Uh, and it sounds like two, we would be making a recommendation to the city. So those, those ideas um, just add up the money, right? And you got about 70 grand right there. Mm -hmm. 
There's 65 built into the electric fund right now for staffing that we're not filling. Um, that's kind of a placeholder to start the conversation about a, an electric superintendent, but it's also there because our line workers are really perceiving the need to add a third line worker so that we can always have two when somebody's on vacation or something else. And plus, we want to start training a new one because they are eventually going to not be here, our line workers, and we need to have an ability to replace them. Mm -hmm. So that 65 um, could fund most of all three of these options without having to make any changes to our budget. Right. But then we've given up our ability to add a, an apprentice, and I can tell you that our line workers would be pretty disappointed if, if that happens. So how does the apprentice mesh with the electric superintendent position? Well, that, it's here's the tricky part and why we haven't already just moved and added an apprentice. Okay. We've got two line workers that are also basically supervising their own duties. Okay. And having an apprentice and doing all the training and organizing of that is a supervisory task. We're already low on supervisory skill and time, and to add that burden to them might be too much. And and uh, so if we added it... So to you, then, 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 which they're trying to... <coughs> Cut back your time to... Well, I can't do... I can't supervise an apprentice. Right. You know, I can't offer anything to that. So uh, it's it's up to our two guys to do that. And, and they'll need... You know, having the AMI implemented will help them a little bit, mm -hmm. be able to add an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So, it, they're, I mean, we're buying ourselves some, some resources with some of those first options down the road. But the bigger question is... Or do we have room in our budget to continue to pay for it? So I think if we're going to talk about doing all of one, two, and three, we probably should look at a rate increase to pay for some of that. So are you saying, am I understanding this correctly, fill an electric superintendent position, that's one thing, but then we would also get an apprentice. I don't think we'll do both, um, but we should. We might think about it. So let's okay. just talk about We'll okay. go to fill electric superintendent. All right. We, we had one. And when he left, we didn't replace that position. Okay. And um, if we were to replace it, it's probably to the tune of about $100,000 a year with salary and benefits. That, um, I mean, we don't have that built into the budget. So even just to do that, we would need a 1% increase. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's that takes care of the idea that we've got a third line worker on the staff, so that at least one of our people could go on vacation. To add a fourth line worker on the staff and an apprentice, we really don't need that many people okay. to do the maintenance work. Uh, we've never had uh, a regular four line workers on staff. Um, sure. And and I just don't see how so we you're keep them busy. Thinking a superintendent or an apprentice. Either or, yeah, and. Uh, our peop our guys would prefer to have an apprentice over a superintendent because they're looking at the need for just having somebody here who's starting to build those skills. And the other thing about filling the superintendent position is I think it will be very difficult for us to find a candidate mm -hmm. who is both capable of being a full-time line worker and having supervisory abilities who will work for us at the wages that we pay. I, the, what we would pay our superintendent is probably what a starting line worker can make at most mm -hmm. large utilities. So okay. it is a, re be a real challenge. Our much more successful strategy would be to pick up somebody that we already know wants to be here, mm -hmm. that already has housing here and connections here, and wants to work in this field, and we train them. The, the other complex long-term possibility if we convert the the uh, coordinator position into an employee rather than a contract it it's hard for me to see how that is of benefit to either us or our current um, person because there's a commensurate cut in pay probably that goes with the addition of um, benefits package and the benefits package I don't know may or may not be necessary so uh, it's also much more complicated for us as an organization to do that, to add a position. It, it implies a much longer commitment, uh, but it also requires uh, all the logistics, the office space, and, and uh, a 
position description that's scored and put into the sure. where it belongs in our organization. It's probably a union position, so then we have to negotiate with the union about what the payout to be, and it's right. And that that might come clear in time. Yeah, when we see how this that role that's useful, develops, right? that was our baseline idea. Was we're moving up to halftime. We have a lot to learn about how this position will work within our organization and what benefits it has to offer. Mm -hmm. That after a few years, it'd probably be easier for us to make that decision. Okay, so, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, go no. question. Do you have Do you have a recommendation of one of these? Which of these five things you'd like to see? Well, I I don't um, because I don't really have a position on how fast you want to go on the climate action plan. So I'm comfortable sticking with what our existing plan is, and I'm comfortable with, with doing any of these if you want to try to move them up. Okay. Seems to me that the complex long-term additions are complex and long-term. <laughs> yes. And we should leave yes. them there. Yes. And, the and go ahead and, but go ahead with the first three. I, I would agree. I, I think the, mm -hmm. uh, those long-term uh, options, uh, you know, I think will be good good conversation uh, as we proceed with these. If we proceed with these other ones, uh, plus I think we're 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 still biting off a significant amount of, uh, of things that uh, yeah are gonna gonna fill not only Mike's plate, our plate, uh, right, and others uh, that that I think will uh, keep us all pretty pretty. Uh, Pretty engaged and busy, so uh, so I I, mean, I see the value of, of kind of speeding up the uh, the climate climate action plan activities, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, with with the exception of the, of the second one, which I think just we just have to have this conversation at the council just to make sure that the council is is comfortable with this kind of. Uh, <coughs> Re way, way, rearrangement. Way, way to deal with uh, <clears throat> with that with that money. Um, so where does that leave the need for an apprentice? Would that be pursued then, but not as part of this idea, or how? Yeah, I don't, I want to keep those two things separate. Okay. I mean, we we have to have the whole context, the whole picture, sure. to understand the effects they have on each other. But I think this is just in response to your request for. How do we go faster on the climate action plan? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we know that other thing is still there that we might want an apprentice, and that we understand what it'll take to add one. Well, the, and the placeholder in the budget was sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, would address the uh, apprentice. W was your thought that that there we would the, that we would take action on? Uh, decision about an apprentice at some some date soon. Or I it, think that's a 2020 issue. Yeah, but if if we don't decide to do this until middle of the summer, we we're not gonna, we're not going to end up hiring somebody probably until later in the summer. So you know, it's not going to be a sixty-five thousand uh, dollar issue. If, no, and and uh, hmm. with the electric department, you know, any sort of half or partial year issue at that level isn't a budget breaker because the electric department has reserves. Right. So even if we didn't you know, address it the next year, we can get it the next year. And, and frankly, we've been overperforming our budget on a regular basis in the electric department, which is why we have reserves. So there's a good chance that if we added 40 or $50,000 worth of employment with an apprentice that we could fund that and all of these things without a rate increase. But there's a chance you won't, and then mm -hmm. you'll be looking at a bigger rate increase necessary in the future. Okay. So, so tying the, those two issues together, these decisions on these three items and the rate increase, because I don't think we can, if we if we don't talk about the rate increase, we're we're going to fund it out of this budget and. Uh, yeah, there's been, there's been no money set aside in this budget for that, other than to to say, well, we could take that staffing reserve and use it for these uh, 
these three items. Mm -hmm. So I mean, my my approach would be to to increase the rates by two percent and have that basically pay for these three um, activities. So two percent won't pay for these three activities. Uh, we'll pay for most of them. But we're uh, one percent is about twenty seven thousand dollars. That's our estimate. So at fifty four thousand, we're still fifteen short. It'll pay for the first two of the three. Could you give an example or break it down as to how much that would be in the average homeowner's bill? Um, like if they pay. If they pay a hundred dollars a month for electricity, so it'd be hundred and then it'd be two dollars a month, so right. twenty-five dollars a year. So would this affect the, uh, the the fixed fee or just the the portion of the, the, the? We've normally been doing across the board increases on all of our rates at the same amount, so we would just take the fixed fee and increase it by two percent, and the kilowatt fee and increase okay. it by two percent, and the dual fuel and off-peak fees and increase it by 2%. One of the things that will happen in 2020 is that SIMPA is organizing some trainings on rate work. And so mm -hmm. we may come back and kind of revisit our whole rate structure in 2020 after we've gone through that process. But for now, any of the rate increases, I'd recommend we just do across the board. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, are we, are we all in agreement to pursue Items one, two, and three, the low risk short term additions. And do you want a resolution on that, Mike? I think a motion would be great, yeah. Well, I would make a motion to, uh, to pursue and approve the first three items uh, in the low risk short term additions section. Uh, with the understanding that number one and three, um, we can just go ahead with as a PUC and number two would go to the city council for consultation. And would that also be the understanding that number one might involve getting the second contractor because he doesn't have the time? Quite possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to specify that at this time. No. Just understanding that, you know, okay. we're just increasing those hours. So. Yep, that'll, that'll be Mike and Shane's problem. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> and then we'll leave uh, the complex long-term additions. Um, I think those are good to keep on the list of concerns. Um, and that's where they'll be for a while. So when we start to look at the 2020 budget and some of the things that the Climate Action Plan is going to suggest that we do to further implementation of that. We're going to have more um, expense, uh, possibly more expense you know, in front of us to, to do some of that. Um, we should start thinking about our, our strategy for the fund, the funds to to make that happen, uh, and maybe we could throw that at staff as. I think that's part of the the implementation is coming up with okay, what's it going to take to do these things, and fitting that into our budget and everything else. The electric department. Um, <laughs> thinking ahead two or three years isn't enough right now because there's a 2023 transition where all of our debt for the power plant and, and significant reconstruction goes away and you know four hundred thousand dollars a year suddenly is not being spent on debt payments and we don't really need to borrow more money to do anything that's on the schedule right now so we're talking about two percent being fifty thousand dollars and we might have three hundred fifty thousand dollars of change shortly which is now we're talking about 15% of our rates. So we don't want to necessarily build up rates on a straight line level and then suddenly in 2023 we're $400,000 to the good and we don't know what to do with it. So I think at some point we're going to have to start looking five, six years down the road. And it would be nice to think about 
what those implementation plans are in that sort of time frame, five, six years of them, so that we can spend our reserves a little bit and increase rates a little bit and kind of smooth that all out. That's a good position to be in. Sure. Um, should, sh I guess this brings up the question of the budget for 2020, and um, can we deal with that now? Proposed 2020 you might want to talk about the solar project first. <clears throat> so I think that the budget really is potentially affected pretty heavily by that question. Okay. Um, let's do that. Um, you all got uh, a lengthy memo from me describing a uh, potential solar project that I have been uh, working on with uh, True North Solar. Um, the, the basic situation is they're in a position to capture a 30% tax credit on a project with an entity like the city that um, you know doesn't have the, the tax liability. And uh, so they'd be willing to pass some of those savings along to us. And um, so they're looking for a fairly large uh, solar project to do uh, with, with an entity, a public entity, um, of about 200 to 400 kilowatts. And um, the proposal actually works out to be pretty economically favorable for uh, a system of that size. Um, they're willing to do it on a power purchase agreement basis rather than so the city wouldn't have to put up a lot of money up, up front, uh, and rather we would just, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, pay on an on, on a power purchase agreement basis that would be roughly similar to the PPA that we would have with Simpa, um, and so it would be close to a pass through over 20 years. Um, however, there is some costs. Um, the first three years, the uh, we would pay more than we would get. Uh, so there'd be uh, costs associated with that. Um, the other interesting thing about the proposal is that it would be based on a matching kilowatt PV uh, installed um, that True North would, uh, th it would, True North, they would take into account the other PV projects they would install in the city and in the surrounding area, in, in fact, the entire county. And the more business they did in the county, the lower rate they would charge us for the electricity. So, and that's that's kind of spelled out in the letter of intent there. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other thing that uh, is, I would point out about this project that has just come come clear lately is that we there was a misunderstanding about the um, the suitability of the um, public works building property as a site for this system um, and uh, at first we had th the developer thought that the PVs uh, the solar arrays could go on the property where the Tom Tabota motel used to be close to the highway but um, that property is the city's actually considering using that property for commercial use at some point and so there was a misunderstanding about the space available at the public works building and so that has, um, uh, you know, that just came to light today. And, um, you know, that's obviously a pretty big problem. So basically, basically we don't have a site for this project at this time. How, how large a site is, is necessary for we figure the, a two, the maximum size? 200 and two, a 200 kilowatt system, mm -hmm. which would be on the smaller scale of what's been considered, is maybe about three quarters of an acre. And uh, I mean, again, a, a 400 kilowatt system would be an acre and a half. I think it's probably safer to assume it's an acre for 200. Okay. The way he described it, it seemed like there's some baseline amount of space that you need and that it's actually less space per kilowatt to add more. Mm -hmm. so. so four kilowatts could fit into an acre and a half, but 200 might need a full acre. Yeah, and, and uh, <coughs> that's a full acre of flat clear ground mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of those around yeah. in Cook County. And that's another cost that the city would incur would be to create that, to yeah. site prep that. And so that would have to be kind of um, 
nailed down uh, more specifically as to what that cost would be to the city. So basically, I think it's a pretty neat project that I would be interested in pursuing because I think it would it could get us to uh, you know a fairly large solar system installed um, on the city system uh, for a fairly reasonable cost if we could find a suitable site. So would would any of the I mean I haven't walked it so I don't know. Let, let me just say one more thing. Oh, sure, one sorry. one more complication here, as if these there aren't enough, right. is that the thirty percent tax credit expires at the end of December, and so and so there has been a um, you know there's a timeline and we were that's why there's language in there about maybe calling another PUC meeting later in December to get this approved um, again that was that discussion happened before we realized there was a problem with the site selection so um, uh, at the end of December the the tax credit decreases from 30 percent to 26 percent which which may not be a total deal breaker but is obviously a you know um, as Mike said that's four percent of a big number, yeah, right. Eight hundred thousand was the, what I heard today. Eight hundred thousand would be for like a four hundred kilowatt system, I think. Yeah. So, okay, you know, it could be fifteen to thirty thousand dollars difference in just the tax credit between mm -hmm. December and January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where the timeline push came from. It so, mm -hmm. and so I interrupted. Oh no, um, my <coughs> question was: Is I know the front of that property seems like, you know the city might want to save it for commercial would there be any potential of doing it toward the back well the back is where the public works building is and there there is a small space in the middle which would maybe accommodate a hundred kilowatt system 150 well, there isn't any space without going to the city council and asking for well, it sure. right right and in in front of the building right behind the building there is some space but the developers already looked at it and discarded it oh so, so are there are there too small, small not big enough, and, no. and and we actually get some sightline issues on our roof there. So to drop down thirty or forty feet, maybe it's not even suitable for solar. Mm. Well, and I, I can see. I mean, as a city council member, I think there's there's a high value to the highway frontage property with sewer and water and road access uh, yeah. that's there. I for mean, sure. The, uh, I was thinking that what about some of the, the city-owned land up uh, behind the uh, lower lower water tanks? I mean, it's on the slope, but we need some some improvements to it. But uh, it's accessible and um, it's a south-facing slope. South-facing slope. Yeah, uh, I I think that's a tricky spot to think about developing. We don't know what's going on with South Duke Bluffs yet. We don't know about that corner being used for um, assisted living. It's been looked at for that. I mean, there's just a lot of folks that are kind of have their eye on that southwest corner mm -hmm. of the Gunflint and the old Gunflint mm -hmm. for different uses. And I think this would, we'd have to stick a pin on the ground for this. And are we willing to give up the flexibility for those other things yet? If the answer is yes, it's rocky and wet and mm -hmm. forested. And so to do site prep there would mean we'd have to clear an acre of forest and make it somewhat flat, you know, even if it's sloped, it can't be mm -hmm. wet or rocky. So I, I think it would be pretty complicated to, to do right there. And in terms of like space that we've already cleared with our lower water tanks, there just isn't any. Mm -hmm. uh, and right behind it is a giant lump of rock too. All right. So did you or True North have other ideas for sites? No, see this just this just this asked. misunderstanding just came about today. I see. Okay. And uh, and Chris O'Brien is here. Chris, did you have anything to add to kind of my description of what's going on? No, I think that's it. Uh, no, I think you we got the point. We did some analysis just to some scenario analysis just to look at what the cost of the city would be over a range of assumptions and how much solar gets put installed in Cook County and yeah, the cost would range from yeah. Uh, you know, a cumulative cost of the county from say a little less than ten thousand to a hundred thousand. So, so there's a temp depending on what assumptions you make about how much solar gets installed. I mean, I think regardless, we're committed to going forward, and, and, and True North's very excited about going forward with you know actively marketing solar in, in uh, Cook County. Sure. Um, but it, this was just kind of a, a neat twist. Of a, uh, there's a business model I, I wasn't familiar with. I mean, in the, in the past. Um, this ability 
for relatively small entities like Trinor Civil to offer this kind of a PPA. Um, they, <coughs> historically, uh, that kind of thing was only done by investment banks and you know, because of the complexity of the, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, this, this kind of uh, uh, tax equity. But uh, that, that seems to, but they, they've come up with a model that allows the, you know, the, the uh, True North founder and his wife to make these kind of deals. So does the 200 kilowatts have to all be in the same place? Or could we put some of it on the library and some of it somewhere else? I think they probably want it all in the same place. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah 200 is about the bare minimum. Uh, a two, 200 kilowatt co-located site, I think, was kind of the bare minimum okay. of what they need. Because they, they're it work. working at doing this at other sites in the state. They like to do like a, a project a year. And, they, and 200 is about as, as small a project as they would do. Yeah, I think what, what, made the, what made it interesting from their perspective was uh, the, the deal that we had with SEMPA, that you know, if we have a system of that size, that they would buy the offtake at uh, 7.9 cents. So. And does it have to be located in the city? I think it needs to be on our system. So in the city or, you know, Croftville is on the PUC system, even though it's not in the city limits. So I think where we're at now is we're kind of back, back into a, a site selection mode. Uh, I think Chris and I will be working on that in the next few days. Um, if And Mike, to whatever degree he's willing. Um, if something were to come to light, I guess we might try to keep going with this. But it, it's, you know, just from today, it's, it's kind of looking like maybe we should, um, you know, take our time and, and try to, uh, reorganize this for for the following year. And what about the possibility of the business park? I mean, you know, yeah. And obviously, there's lots of there, and you know, I mean, the timing issue is. I mean, again, not then we would have to go through the EDA, which would be fine, you know, but that would take some time to. Um, Do we have to have ownership of the parcel before the end of the year, or can, or can we be in the process of? I think the business park is a great idea. I, my favorite site is right above the Como plant in yeah. the business park. Because I think there's probably an acre that we could access there that would even allow the rest of that lot to still be developed for something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's relatively close to utilities and it's relatively close to road access, which means the site prep wouldn't be terrible. But just a quick back of the napkin sketch, it still might be fifty, sixty thousand dollars to acquire and prep that site. And you know that we haven't built anything yet, and then the subsidy over three years could be we don't know, but it might be a hundred grand. So that you know, 160 grand is pretty cheap for a 200 kW system, but it's still a lot of dang money. Right. Yeah. And it's still only a 200 kilowatt system. Like that's not even a drop in the bucket of our actual usage. Right. So what did we accomplish? Chris, do you have that those spreadsheets? Printed by any chance? Do you have any copies of those? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Ann and Tim could each get one if you. Oh, thank you. And that basically just shows um, different okay. scenarios okay. for on one short. So. other other kilowatts installed in the county and what it would mean for very small print. Yeah. <laughs> get your glasses on. We want you to see Chris, some of those. Chris their glasses. Yeah. So I think for today you can take that home and and yeah. thank you. Cool. Yes. Um, so back to your question, Tim, about what's needed by the end of December. Um, all I, my my understanding at this point is all that would be needed at this time is a letter of intent, and so there would be no formal commitment, other than no contract anyway, no PPA that would have to be signed before the end of the month. But uh, but that said. Um, True North would be putting some money down that they would not get mm -hmm. back if the project didn't go through. So we'd want to be pretty sure that the land was available and that the ducks were in a row before we signed a letter of intent. Right, but if we have, a, if we have another month or another yep. meeting this month, or even a second meeting this month, another third meeting or something, I, if we need to have a later, later meeting, um, I would feel more comfortable if we had, you know, the site and had some knowledge about what that might be and Absolutely. How, that, how that might work. Uh, the way I see it is we're not going to have another meeting at the end of the month unless there's some 
pretty radical breakthrough in site selection in the next several days. Well, I think that, I mean, I'm not, you know, familiar with that exact lot you're talking about, but the whole concept of, of putting something like this in the business park that would generate electricity for the city is, I think it would be really a great use of that space. I mean, I just can't say strongly enough how much I think that would be really good for the city and the county, for the EPA. Okay. I mean. So you would. Well, I would agree, and I, and I think that the, that the, the land next to the propane tanks, um, there's only a select hmm. number of types of uh, users that would would want to be located uh, in that that area. Sure. Have to be pretty passive, and uh, this is the type of use that it, that could very well offer the buffer between that and then maybe a, a lot that somebody might be interested in buying. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike, just with your knowledge of how the EDA works, do you see any sort of path forward with kind of fast tracking that with the EDA? Not if you mean get a firm answer before the end of the month. No, that, that's what I mean. Definitely not. There's no path to those that. Get an idea of whether it might work, whether there's any interest. Mm -hmm. We can certainly do that. Yeah, I don't think that gets us to where we need to be, though, does it? Well, and I don't I, see why I, I not. It, no, really, it, it comes down to what your north is the, the level of risk they're willing to take on mm -hmm. so so we can go back to marty and see if, you know we have a lead on a site but but, but it's not you know, there's nothing definite in it and can we sign a letter of intent with the site i think as long as the letter of intent is really clear about what we're obligating ourselves and what we have and what we're going to do yeah. and he understands that then it's up to them to decide okay. is it the understanding of this commission that we would like Mike to pursue this with help from me and maybe Chris to the extent that Mike is willing? You're going to need I, to do a lot of it, I think. I, just keep I up get with that. What you've done. Well, I would, I would support that. I, I, uh, and I don't know if you know the business park is the only possibility just mm -hmm. off the top of my head. You know, I mean, I came up with a couple sites. I mean, the, but I but there may be there may be some other <coughs> we looked at the the power plant site and there's not a lot of space there mm -hmm. we'd have to acquire some I think from one of the neighbors okay um, it, I mean, with Murphy Mountain but that's not in our system right so mm -hmm. golf course yeah, yeah and we've kind of already used it and it's not in our system and and I mean that just brings up a whole other issue for me is we've got this deal where we're actually benefiting from solar being installed on Arrowhead system, and we haven't even talked to Arrowhead about it. Might put them on the list of <laughs> notifications. You know, we're we're benefiting financially from them losing financially, and they might not appreciate that. And, and we, you know we should at least check in with them about where where are they at on this issue. Mm -hmm. And, and who knows, if they do appreciate it, maybe they want to be part of it. And maybe they've got a site that we could, or maybe we can look for a site in the county rather than in the city. It just seems like it's worth us going down that road. And, and then after we're done with that, we've already got this plan. We need to talk to Simpa. I don't think we can sign a power purchase agreement with True North because we have an all needs power purchase agreement with Simpa that mm -hmm. says we have to buy all our power from them which means True North would have to sell it to Simpa, and then Simpa would sell it to us. And then there'd be some additional transfer of money we'd have to agree to give Simpa. I don't think we can be the intermediary, but we'll have to deal with Simpa on that, and they'll probably need to do some legal work to figure that out. Yeah, I think it would be simpler than that. I think we would be purchasing the power from True North, and then we would sell it to Simpa, and then they would sell it to us. Just as if we owned, built and owned the site ourselves, you know, it's not they just don't as if though, because we're buying it from somebody else, and our contract with Simpa says we can't do that. Mm. So, what, so what dollar yeah. amount are we talking about if if we delay past the end of the year and miss miss that thirty percent tax credit? Uh, Four percent of eight hundred grand. I mean, we don't know. Four percent of so five hundred. I mean, well, it's a, it's. I think a four hundred kilowatt system is unlikely. I think that the two you know, hundred kilowatt system is probably more likely, and. You know, for the cost, the cost of that's probably somewhere in the four to five hundred thousand range, and so so twenty grand, twenty thousand. Yeah. yeah, not the end of the world, but right. significant. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and and that would be, um, 
you know, I think that, uh, I, that they would work that into the PPA pricing. So, uh, so we, no. there's a lot of moving pieces. I mean, I'd be more inclined to make sure we get it right rather than trying to push this deadline and then yeah. feel it, feeling like we're, we're not yeah. quite there, but there are many loose ends. Yeah, I agree. There seem to be a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. that's not unusual. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just think with the public interest, I mean, <clears throat> I think we we have a responsibility and, and you know, I mean, even though it might save us 20000 it might cost us more if we jump the gun and yeah. and do something that, I mean, if, if it's a... If it's a solid project, it's a solid project, and the twenty thousand dollars over a five, twenty twenty years five hundred thousand dollar project is mm -hmm. not that significant. I mean, what makes it a solid project is your willingness to subsidize it. Oh. So if you're willing to increase your appetite to subsidize it by twenty thousand in exchange for some clarity, yeah. but it's not a solid project, <laughs> you know. There's nobody that's going to do this unless you give them money, lots of money. Yeah, it's a solid project if you consider the the um, uh, you know the the climate change um, benefits, uh, the carbon reduction benefits. Well, we disagree about that too. Yeah. I really think this is going the wrong direction <clears throat> because we're spending a lot of time and money investing in a tiny drop in the bucket, rather than working through Simpa. And trying to maybe better return. encourage their efforts to get their entire system to be renewable based. Of course, and I think we need to do both. Even if they only moved a fraction of their system to be renewable based, it's tens time tens of times more than what we're going to accomplish on our own. Mm -hmm. And and I addressed that in my memo, in that you know I think there's the uh, utility scale renewable energy kind of avenue and then there's the distributed renewable energy avenue and I mean this is stuck right in the middle in my mind well and because it requires transmission and distribution but it doesn't get any of the benefits of utility scale uh, you know the, the scale yeah and, and so I but there is an argument for for promoting and facilitating distributed renewable energy projects with the hope that in the future those will become uh, you know the cost will come down and they'll become more prevalent and more useful uh, blah 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 sure there's an argument so well I <laughs> well you know, I see those ads mm -hmm. on TV of XL advertising that uh, by 2050 they're going to be completely carbon free with their generation and based on renew renew all their energy is going to be based on renewables you know I, I think somewhere along the line Simpa is, is has got to join in that same conversation and well they know. are well, well not only do they have to they have to because yeah. their coal-fired power plant is owned by excel yeah, that's right and, so and that actually you know mike and i had talked about getting simpa staff up here this winter sometime and giving giving us an update on the, the their progress on that yeah i and i think that might be eye-opening to us to see some of the analysis that they're working on right now like they're putting real effort into what does a 80% renewable system by 2030 look like for Simpa, and yeah. and uh, not just because we're asking them to, but because of 10 reasons, you know, because Excel's going to uh, walk away from Sherco 3 because this is actually when you go onto the market and look for a new generation, it's all wind and solar and gas now, like. The, the financial models that look at 2030 suggest that we've already done what you're thinking we need to do with this 200 kilowatt system, which is get it where the industry is purchasing this as a cheaper option you know, other than coal fire or some other carbon using system. So, Do you, do you have any idea of what their, what their timeline is for coming up with a, a more set you know, when they can actually say, this is our plan for 2030? Do they um, know when they're going to get to that point? I don't think so, but I think it's, it's in my mind, it, you know, you don't have to go either or on these two strategies, but the strategy of working with and through Simpa to get the entire system to be renewable based, there's just so much more to gain 
than us building a 200 kilowatt system. And when you say that, what does that look like on our end? I mean, how do we work with them and get them to be more renewable? Well, I don't know that we have to do anything anymore because I think there are other forces at play. Well, and, th and that, that's always been the case. I mean, we're the we're the the one percent that is trying to push the the other ninety nine percent to move in a, in a direction. Right. We, we don't have much much right. uh, you know. So to, to what, make that happen, uh, what do we do? That's, that's what I'm yeah. just asking. I'm we we show up and participate so that our voice is valued, mm -hmm. and we build relationships, and we continue to share what our needs are. And we've got a climate action plan and strategic planning and other things that say these are our goals, help us meet them. And we pay attention to what they're working on so that we get an idea of where they're at. And, and you know, it's a political process. Right. And, and uh, I don't know why, but it seems to be that they're moving that direction for a lot of reasons. I mean, I agree with George. You know, I think we should get them back here. I mean, it's been over a year that mm -hmm. since they've been here. and. I mean, I still have the impression that, you know, they're burying their head in the sand with regard to climate change, uh, you know, and... I think less so, but... Well, but you, to, you, to me, yeah. a year ago, it seemed pretty obvious that they were, they were not going to take this up as a climate change initiative. They're, they weren't even looking at, wanted, didn't even want to look at it as a, as a business model for the future to understand the financial implications that it might hold for all the member communities and you know to me that's for an organization that has long-range planning skills th this is one variable that they're not throwing in the uh, the mix and I, I, I think that that's uh, really really an issue uh, that's going to come come to bite us all and if uh, if we can keep raising that question with them and if we, we can invite them back and say, you know, we're, we're, this is what we've done in the last year. What have you done? You know, where, where is Simpa heading? You know, you're, you're, you know, we're relying on you to, to pr provide um, the, the type of electric uh, that, that we, we think is environmentally sound and, and reasonably priced and that's going to be safe and, and trouble free. Um, what's the plan? Yeah, uh, well, I, I, let's do that. And I think they'd have some answers for you this time. I do, and I think they'd be markedly different than 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't feel like they had, had answers last time. Yeah, they really didn't. And, and what their answers were just, we're not interested in talking about the things that you want to talk about. Yeah. Well, that means that they're not... Yeah. They didn't have answers to them because they didn't want to talk about them. And, right. you know. <laughs> and they're talking about it now. We, we, we will do that. Between Mike and I, we'll um, make that invite and schedule that for sometime early in the winter. So, so can I suggest then for, for with regard to this, this the solar issue that, you know, that are, if, if there is something that is a breakthrough <clears throat> this month to call another meeting, um, you know, I'm open to that, but my attitude is that we should be looking at this more of a long-term project and making sure we get it right and, you know, get things addressed the way they need to be um, and not jump the gun and try to push this just for, for that extra uh, tax credit savings. Yeah. My, my suspicion is that what we'd have to modify in the letter of intent in order for us to actually be able to sign it in good faith mm -hmm. is something that he's not going to be interested in signing anymore because of all the loose ends that we still have. So, and we also haven't had our city attorney look at it yet, and I think he needs to. <laughs> and SIPA has to And SIPA off. needs to, yeah, there's a lot of pieces that, that okay. need to happen that we'll, I, I suppose we'll be working on in December whether we think there's a, a chance of this panning out or not. Okay. Um, we hadn't discussed the the 2020 budget. Do we still have time and gumption for that, or can we? You guys, you guys can stay as long as you want today. Okay. Um, when do you no, need? No, no. Just, yeah, when well, do you I'm, need I'm, the 2020 I'm, budget? Be done. 2020 budget uh, approved. Well, if you want to make changes to rates for 20 and 20, I would recommend you do it now. Okay. I would like to consider the 2% the 
uh, raise in electric rates for 2020. And I would put that forward as a motion for the reasons we've discussed. I'll second, second that, uh, but, I, but I've got you know, some thoughts on that too. I mean, initially I, when I saw your memo, I was a little taken back thinking that, okay, we were thinking about a 0% rate increase and now you know, we come up, kind of come up with some thoughts in the last minute, uh, which I don't kind of like the idea of throwing stuff in at the last minute, but you know, that's the budget process. So, I mean, you know, that's the kind of way, way things work sometimes. I mean, the city council's budget doesn't could be approved until we, our next meeting. And we did actually discuss this last month and you weren't here. Oh, I know, I know that. That's okay. what I mean. So, but. <clears throat> George, were you motioning for the whole budget? Approve the whole budget? 2% rate was all he's got. Okay. For the electric portion. Yeah, and but I think with the conversation that we've had, had here today, I mean, I feel a lot, lot more comfortable doing going uh, and approving a 2% rate increase. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that need to happen, I think, uh, to implement not only a climate action plan, but also to take our electric system and kind of move it forward to where it's going to be in a, in a really good position for the future, too. I mean, the, 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 meter, the metering and that is going to be of value, and to get that done, to combine that with the, the uh, water meters uh, is something mm -hmm. we've talked about, and speeding up that, uh, it, it, there's, there's value to that. Um, freeing up some of Mike's time to work on other projects. Uh, Mike's time has always been Overcommitted, and uh, you know, if if that's if that's possible to do, the council seem to think that uh, that's the, the the priority for the use of his time. Uh, you know, I would support that. Um, and then just the the idea that we we step up the uh, time on the commitment to the implementation of the climate action plan, I think, is something we've talked about, and we kind of been on the forefront from the beginning and it, it's a pressing issue and I think uh, delaying and waiting and you know not not taking action is uh, you know to everybody's detriment so I, I think uh, with the conversation we've had with the, with the information that's been in front of us you know I could support support that uh, that motion Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I feel too that it's a it's a modest increase, you know, uh, close to inflation. It's not selling the farm, uh, and and there are things that we need to do. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it, it seems modest, but I, you know, you know, I'm reminding myself that it is, you know, coming out of, you know, working people's budgets, and so I would I would like us to be able to as clearly as possible be able to point to what we're going to do with the increase, you know, in some way. I don't know how that would be communicated, but I think that would be really good if we could explain to customers, you know, this is why we're doing this. It's so, because of long-term planning, it's because of the climate action thing, it's because of, you know, all these other things. Well, and I, and I would really don't, wouldn't want to pin it just on, on these items because there's there's a lot more that's part of our you know electric budget and, right you know and you know even as mike says a couple of years down the line we might be sitting pretty sweet with uh, you know some of our debt service uh, paid off and and that um, the things that are in front of us the uh, the um, apprentice uh, you know the implementation of the climate plan uh, getting the, the the AMI meters uh, set. Uh, I mean, are all things that we've we've talked about and have been part of our conversation for not just now, but no. for for a long long time. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, you, if you're going to build the conversation, we build it around the the, the entire system, mm -hmm. of, sure. and not just these items that we've just you know talked about today, but you know part of the the entire system. Right. And we, we have a good, healthy electric uh, utility system, and I think that's what uh, you know we need to convey to the public is that we've had modest rate increases, uh, you know, over the years, and we uh, 
uh, you know, try to do our best to keep those rates, you know, down. Um, and so, do we need the two percent to continue to make sure that we we uh, provide the service though, and, and make sure we look to the future? Right. Good. Good enough. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Shane, would you like to say anything? You've been sitting so so patiently. It's well, I just came because I saw what was on the agenda, and, and I also sent an email a while back about some other stuff. But Climate action plan implementation. Of maybe uh, could we do this another uh, in, a, in a month? Yes. Well, the things that Shane wanted to talk to you about, we've already talked about. And we don't actually have any questions that the PUC needs to assist with on what he was working on. So mm -hmm. we, we but will we're be interested in giving you updates on things. Yes, but that, not right now. That, that's what I would like. Yeah, we would be very interested in that, right. um, and, and very appreciative of that as well. I just wouldn't mind just circling back to budget, however, because there was another rate increase I was hoping that you would pass. Oh yes, and you do have to approve all the budgets too. Okay, so let's take on my computer die. Oh Shane, before you go, um, just real real quickly back to that other subject. I mean, we just approved uh, increasing the uh, climate action plan coordinators hours from half to full time, um, and Mike explained that you probably wouldn't be available for that, but um, it's something you should be thinking about. Yes, if for some reason you wanted more hours, uh, sure. I think they're going to be there. Is that fair to say? And we would like shame to consider that. This is probably an even better conversation to have in the office sometime. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come to the office sometime. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll be in touch. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Shane. Bye, Shane. <clears throat> water rates. Yeah, water no change, sewer two percent increase were the uh, proposals that we looked at when we reviewed those budgets. So. I make motion to approve those uh, rate increases, or not increases, <laughs> those <laughs> rates for 2020. Second. Any further discussion? Again, I think it, it, it talks about how you know we've been able to build a system and you know look to the future and make sure we have adequate resources to do the things we, we have scheduled to do. But, um, you know, again, our, our water and sewer uh, systems are healthy and. You know, you know, public needs to needs to be aware of that, and, and we try to do as, do as well as we can to keep our rates, uh, you know, as low as we can, but I, still provide the service and reliability that everybody everybody counts on. I would add that part of um, a part of what's in the planning stages for the sewer uh, system is um, uh, looking at uh, odor reduction strategies. So that's that's a public benefit. Anything else? The oh. water fund, one of the things I s talked about in, when we looked at that budget was one of the bond payments that we're making right now for the downtown uh, reconstruction that occurred in 2004, which is coming out of uh, property tax dollars. That That's a payment that we would likely use water rates to pay if we were to do it today and that we might want to think about making that transfer at some point. Mm -hmm. But I'm no longer thinking about that for 2020. Okay. Um, so we already mentioned that to the council that we're not looking at that as a strategy to change their property tax situation for 2020 with uh, the Highway 61 project costs coming in where they did. And we used cash out of both the sewer and water funds at a pretty high level to pay the sewer and water expenses for those projects, higher than we anticipated. We had the cash to do it, but it'd be nice to build a little bit back up because the water fund's pretty strapped right now. So I don't think we need an increase, but we're also not going to be using any of that money to... We're not going to lose any more yeah, of that. We're going to allow some to accumulate instead. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We did it, Hayden. Uh, again, my computer is dead. Is there anything left on the agenda? Any commissioner reports? You know, I, um, Ooh, I, I should report I met with uh, Nancy Kelly. Had a good meeting with her, learning about what she does and stuff. And we talked about um, 
um, my thoughts, you know, my request that would she be able to do something in town about ener residential energy efficiency? And she said yes, and she's starting to work on it. And, you know, we'll get back to us. But anyway, so. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. She seems really excited and super knowledgeable and. Yeah, neat position to have. Yeah. Here. I'm not married, not married yet. I haven't either. Um, I've got one thing. On December 13th at 3.30, uh, an individual from the McKnight Foundation is going to be in town for a site visit um, for the, uh, they're considering a grant to fund half, a half-time position for our Climate Action Plan Coordinator. And um, I won't be around. <clears throat> Mike doesn't think anyone anybody any PUC members need to be there but it would be an opportunity if you'd like I won't be here either I'm gonna be in the city so. okay and it's I don't think it's important not necessary okay all right okay. okay as a matter of fact I'm worried that too many people are already planning on coming okay and oh. that our, our gen our friend you the guy from McKnight is gonna yeah, be you're quite safe. surprised <clears throat> at the number of folks that are here to talk mundane contract business with them 330 December 13th Tim if for some reason you want to um, a rec, uh, represent the PUC to the McKnight Foundation and extend your our thanks. I don't think it'd be a bad thing, but um, as Mike said, I don't have any reason to think it's uh, terribly important. Okay. Okay, and with that, uh, I think where, we're where is that mean? here? City Hall. I think Mayor Jay is going to be there. Hour and 15 minutes. We'll have to tell Carl. <laughs> Did Carl think the meetings were too short? Carl was very proud of his short meetings. Oh. <laughs> Often coming in at seven or eight minutes. <laughs> so we're adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good job, Jordan. <clears throat> yep. Thank you. Happy December, everybody.